U.S. Product Safety Authority say they're launching an investigation into the presence of the toxic metal cadmium in children's jewelry imported from China. The move follows an investigative report from the Associated Press that documented how some Chinese manufacturers have been substituting cadmium for lead and cheap charm bracelets and pendants being sold throughout the United States. One piece analyzed in lab testing contained 91% cadmium by weight, while 12% of the pieces tested contain at least 10% cadmium. Cadmium is a known carcinogen and can hinder brain development in the very young. Chinese police have concluded an investigation into four employees of mining giant Rio Tinto arrested on charges of infringing trade secrets and bribery and have sent the case to prosecutors. Rio Tinto and the Australian government say they've urged China to allow the four, including Australian citizen Stern Hu, legal representation and to handle the case in a transparent way. The four were first detained in early July, initially on suspicion they stole state secrets, but the charges were downgraded a month later when they were formally arrested on suspicion. They violated commercial secrets and took bribes. The detentions came soon after a $20 billion investment by Beijing-backed Chinalco into Rio collapsed, sparking accusations that the arrest had been taken as a revenge measure. Thousands of officials have fled the mainland over the past 30 years with some $50 billion in public funds. That's according to the Global Times newspaper, which reported as many as 4,000 officials have disappeared using criminal gangs, mainly in the U.S. and Australia, to launder their ill-gotten gains, buy real estate, and set up false identities. A joint task force involving 15 government ministries has been set up to stop graft in civil service ranks. In recent years, the mainland has sought to negotiate more extradition treaties with Western nations to help it repatriate and punish officials fleeing overseas with public funds. Google has agreed to demands from a local writer's group that it stop scanning and uploading books to the company's online library without the author's permission. The U.S. Internet operator said in a letter to the China Writers Association that it will respect the wishes of any Chinese author who hasn't authorized their books to be scanned. It also included an apology for inadequate communication with Chinese authors. The association said in November that Google should submit proposals to compensate Chinese authors whose works it concluded without approval and immediately stop the practice. China's cabinet has taken action to stabilize the real estate market amid fears the market here is rising too quickly. It's listed 11 specific measures, including an increased supply of low-cost houses for low-income families, restraining purchases for speculation and investment, and laying out the responsibilities of local governments. In one such measure, the down payment required for those buying a second house has now been raised to a minimum of 40%. House prices in 70 large and medium-sized Chinese cities rose for the ninth straight month in November. U.S. Solar Thermal Power Company, eSolar, says it's reached a deal with a Chinese power equipment maker to build a 2,000-megawatt solar thermal power project in China over the next 10 years, thought to be worth as much as $5 billion. In one of the largest renewable energy deals of its kind, the Southern California startup will provide China Shangtung Penglai Electric Power Equipment Manufacturing Company with the technology and expertise to build solar power tower plants over the next decade. The deal comes as the Chinese government aims to boost renewable energy generating capacity in the country with plans to generate at least 10,000 megawatts of solar energy and 20,000 megawatts of wind power by 2020. And two Chinese movies have been pulled from the Palm Springs International Film Festival in protest of the scheduled screening of a documentary about Tibet and the Dalai Lama. The festival director was told that the directors of the two state-backed films, rather than the Chinese government, had decided that they would not allow their work to be screened unless the festival canceled its schedule, showing off the sun behind the clouds. Tibet's struggle for freedom. But one China expert quoted by the LA Times said the withdrawal was basically a decision of the Chinese government. Last July, China demanded that the Melbourne International Film Festival cancel its screening of a documentary about World Uyghur Congress leader Rubia Kadir. And that's the BON headlines for now, but we'll be back with more news after this.